Hi, welcome to the 14 day weather forecast. What a difference one week can make to weather, at least if you're prepared to travel. Because at this time last week, I was in the Canadian mountains surrounded by deep snow drifts, which were left over from last winter. Today, I'm back in the heat of Berkhamsted. Temperatures are approaching 30 Celsius. So, is the hot and summery weather here to stay, or can we expect big changes as we head through the next two weeks? As usual, I'm going to start by taking a look at the view across Europe and the North Atlantic. The animation runs from 18 GMT, Tuesday the 25th. And at the outset, we've got high pressure across the UK, at least mostly because there is a weak weather front slowly pushing southeastwards. It marks a boundary between the very warm conditions to its south and east and the somewhat cooler ones to its north and west. I think the GFS here is overdoing the extent of a rain risk, but the general position of it is probably about right. Now, as I run the sequence, what we see is that weather front fades away, but there's a nasty area of low pressure there to the northwest. It's quite a changeable pattern developing across the northern half of the United Kingdom. Showers or longer spells of rain there at times as we head towards the weekend. But in the south, it's a mostly dry picture, although temperatures will be dipping a little by this point. There is uncertainty, I think, about how quickly that changeable weather will be extending down across all parts of the UK, but it looks like it gets there eventually, as you'll see from the rest of this sequence. Through the weekend, still quite a lot of dry weather in the south, but it's a more changeable pattern generally, the Atlantic returning across all parts of the UK, certainly by next Tuesday or Wednesday, it's a very mixed picture, at least according to this computer model run, but wettest in the north generally. Here's the upper air temperature and jet stream sequence. To begin with, here's the UK, you can see the orange shade in there of the southern and central regions indicating a very warm upper level temperature air mass. The jet stream there up to the northwest and as I run this changes take place there's a low pressure the cooler air shown by the greens gradually pushing southwards and then by the end of the week this is Wednesday the 3rd of July the jet stream making a beeline really for the United Kingdom with the very warm air pushed away to the south so quite a significant change taking place through the first week as I'm saying the details and timing are somewhat up for grabs but the general trend seems to be fairly clear. Just a few charts to illustrate the conditions down at the surface. This is on Wednesday, very warm there in southern and central regions. GFS indicating the chance of a couple of showers there in the south of Britain. I think it may be overestimating that risk but the general picture is fairly clear, warmest in the south, cooler in the north. I'm going to come back to temperatures in the moment because GFS has been under forecasting maximums quite a lot recently, so I'll take a look at those in a moment. On to Friday, somewhat cooler conditions have extended southwards once more. It could be that these temperatures have been undercooked a little bit, but the general trend is probably correct. Into the weekend, 26 there being shown in the London area for greater risk of showers, long spells of rain in central and northern regions. And into next week, it's now cooler there in the south as well, just 19 Celsius in the southeast. But as I'm saying, I think the GFS has been under forecasting maximums recently. Here's a chart from the Met Office UKV model for Wednesday. It's showing forecast maximum temperatures. And you can see that in the London area, in the southeast in particular, it could well reach or even exceed 30 Celsius. I wouldn't be surprised to see 31 being recorded. So very warm or hot in the southern half of UK through the early part of the first week. Now the Morgrebs G ensemble plot showing temperatures of the 850 HPA levels, about 1500 meters above our heads is quite interesting because through the first few days all the lines there are very closely packed together suggesting a good agreement, the temperatures at this level well above the norm. But then the 27th, the 28th sees quite a big drop 
and as we go into weekend a significant spread develops there so as I've been emphasizing the details about this transition remain up for grabs it could be that after the initial cooler plunge upper air temperatures start climbing again at least for a little bit of time so the weekend may not be too bad at all and then later on that big spread remains in place but there isn't a signal at least at this stage for very warm conditions to be returning once they've been pushed away. Rainfall. This is the forecast aggregates in millimetres from the ECM and GFS models for the first five days. The key takeaway is they both indicate low totals or even dry conditions in the south the wettest ones in the northwest of UK. The distribution there consistent across the models. Moving forwards to the 0 to 10 day period, the general pattern remains the same. Wettest in the northwest, especially western Scotland, some of the orange shading beginning to appear over or at least close to 100 millimetres of rain in parts of western Scotland, according to the GFS there and the ECM on the left. Totals in southern England remain low on both of them, although there has been some rain at this point, which suggests that the changeable conditions will be pushing down into the south, although high pressure may well continue to exert more influence. So, in more general terms, how do the deterministic models compare towards the end of the first week? Here's the GFS, which was used to generate the sequences. Tuesday, the 2nd of July, high pressure there centered to the southwest over the Azores. It's a changeable pattern across the UK, but with the high pressure to the south, the driest conditions generally would likely to be in southern counties. The Canadian model, quite similar, changeable, showers or longest spells of rain becoming more widespread. But the German icon is significantly different on this update. It's got high pressure from the southwest still ridging across the UK. It's having a lot more influence, a more settled pattern if this one is correct. But it isn't really supported by the other European models. This is the ECM. Maybe a little bit less unsettled on the whole than GFS and GEM were suggesting, but nonetheless, if there's an Atlantic influence here, the risk of showers or long spells of rain, especially in central and northern Britain. Finally, the UK Met Office Global. In recent updates, it has been indicating that high pressure would be having quite a lot of influence, but this particular update has backed away from that to an extent, and it's a changeable pattern across all areas. So I think taking those together, what the suggestion is that it will be turning more mixed as we head through the first week, especially in the northern half of the UK, but even the south looks prone to being influenced by Atlantic disturbances more as we head towards the end of the first week into the second. Well, let's take a look. Of course, at this range, it's just about the trends and probability, so the general direction of travel, starting with the 16-day GEFS plot for London. Upper air temperatures across the top. The signal is when averaged out for them to be close to the norm. The thick purple line there, the ensemble mean remains close to the 30 year average, the thick black line. Now with that said, once more, there is quite a big spread developing there. One or two runs are bringing in very warm conditions, but just one or two, hence a low chance of that, at least at the moment and a few are bringing in cool air, but it's probably transitional as different sectors cross, push across this part of the UK. In terms of rain, well, there are some spikes there through the second week, but not a huge number, reinforcing the message that in the south at least, it may be dry for much of the time. There will be some rain around, showers or even longer outbreaks, but quite a lot of dry periods too, I would expect if this is correct. The two meter temperatures shown on the data tables here, maximums across the top, overnight lows across the bottom. Lots of the uh, oranges there, so 21 to 25, a little bit of the red, which is going for 26 to 30, and some of the cooler runs there, maxing out at between 16 to 20. But GF, GFS and GEFS have, uh, as I said, been underestimating maximums a little bit recently. Nonetheless, the trend there, is for 
not much change through the second week. It's probably going to be quite warm when the sun appears. I wouldn't be at all surprised if temperatures down at the ground level, regardless of those which I showed at the upper air level, are not above the 30 year average, maybe one or two degrees on most days. Overnight lows there, 11 to 15 being typical. Up to Manchester, the trends here, very similar, perhaps a few more rain spikes, so it's becoming wetter as we head northwards, or at least the risk of rain is increasing as we move up across the UK, more of an Atlantic influence further away from that area of high pressure. The two metre temperatures, similar really to the London plot, although if anything, there could be something of an upwards trend there later on, more of this 21 to 25 Celsius appearing as we head through the second half of the second week. So just some indication possibly of it starting to turn warmer there in northern parts of Britain. Now Glasgow finally up to the northwest. If anything here, the temperatures are a little bit below the 30 year normal, close to average really, but the ensemble mean just dipping a degree or two below it through the first part of the week at least. And in terms of rain spikes, there's an ongoing risk of rain that's a wetter picture than in the south. Two metre temperatures for Glasgow. Once more, something of a warming trend there later on, although it's not a, not a strong one. The yellows dominating early on, 11 to 15, 16 to 20, appearing quite abundantly as well, particularly later on. Cooler nights here as well, as you would expect further north. Lots of light green, so single figures, but not really very strong trends there. All in all, fairly close to the average, I would suggest, for, for those, uh, for those uh, plots. Rainfall, the ECM probability charts here, showing the chance of five millimetres or more falling on the first three days of the second week. The distribution is the thing to look at wettest in the west and particularly the northwest. The orange shading there in western Scotland suggesting something like a 60% chance of five millimetres or more of rain falling on each of the first three days. Moving forwards to the next three days, chance of five millimetres or more of rain falling in the northwest just decreasing a little bit. Uh, this range though it's probably due to ensemble spread more than a clear indication of a change developing. The GEFS 10 to 15 day pressure anomaly chart, positive to the west, so perhaps indicating where high pressure is going to be centred, negative there as we head into Scandinavia, the UK very close to the norm. So I think it's difficult to draw too many conclusions from, from this chart. There is a chance that high pressure will be building in from the west. It doesn't look favourable for it to be particularly warm though. If it's going to be centred to the west of the UK, we're likely to be under a northwesterly flow. So all in all, temperature's probably quite close to the norm if this is correct. The mean surface level pressure data table for York something of an upwards trend there as we go through the second week low pressure being more influential early on but all in all not a very strong signal so to summarize week one fine to begin with in much of england and wales more mixed in scotland and northern ireland indeed it will be hot in southern and central regions early on I think we may well see 30 Celsius being reached for the first time this year. But the cooler and more changeable conditions in the north steadily extend southwards. If you've got plans for the weekend, then keep an eye on the short range forecast because it may well stay dry in southern Britain, a greater chance of rain in central and northern parts of the UK. Week two changeable showers or longer spells of rain are possible in all areas but the signal is for it to be wettest in the north and driest in the south temperatures taken overall probably close to the normal that could be quite warm in the south at times and if anything the trend is for temperatures to rise a little bit in the north later on so there we have it 
The hot weather is here, but it doesn't look like it's going to be staying with us for too long. The computer models are signaling a trend back towards more changeable and somewhat cooler conditions. Nonetheless, the details are uncertain as ever when we're looking more than a few days ahead. There is still a chance, I think, and I'm just really basing this on recent updates rather than the ones I've used here, that high pressure could be more influential than is currently being signposted. So don't give up if you're hoping for a continuation of the fine weather as we head through the second week. Although, as I say at the moment, it doesn't look like the favoured outcome. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. As ever, I hope you found it useful. If you have done, then please consider hitting the like button below. And of course, do subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Remember as well that the best way of staying up to date with the day-to-day -day weather developments is by checking out the weatheroutlook.com website. Thanks very much now. Bye.